It was an armed guard looking after the barrier. It was the docks where our ship was still unloading. It was Nico, wearing clothes I'd never seen before. Do you have any theories about this stone? I think that design represents a dog, a Mexican dog. So, this is the sacred Chihuahua stone? Sheesh. Take a look at this. Mon Dieu! Where did you get that kind of money? It's not mine. I found that statement at Ubier's house. Take a look at this. An eclipse of the sun. Why the sudden interest in astronomy? I found the cutting in Ubier's house. Apparently, it's only visible from Central America. Take a look at this, Nico. That's disgusting, Georges. Why are you carrying it around with you? I don't know. I just can't seem to part with it. Guess what this is. Go on, guess. It's wrought iron, probably from a chimney stack on an old stove. Uh, well, I suppose it could be. How did she know that? My grandfather used to work in a foundry. Would you like a biscuit? Gourmet dog? Have you been eating those things, Georges? Sure, they're great. Labano tells me he's been seeing a lot of you. We meet sometimes for lunch, a drink. After you'd gone back to the States, I was pretty lonely, you know. Lonely? You must have been desperate. Couldn't you just visit the zoo or something? It looked to me like an early portrait of Orson Welles. In Cuaramonte, defacing a poster was probably a capital offense. You can't leave without an exit visa. It was an armed guard looking after the barrier. Welcome to Guaramonte. Thanks. Can we get a cab to the capital? This is the capital. Guaramonte City. When's the next ship out of here? But, senor, don't you like our beautiful country? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like a little piece of paradise right here on Earth. Then why you want to leave? I'm just plain homesick. Like it says in the song. <laughs> a word of warning, senor. If you feel like bursting into song, bite your tongue. Huh? There are official restrictions on music in Guaramonte. How come music is restricted in Guaramonte? It is part of the great cultural enrichment campaign. Traditional Guaramonte music is considered unsuitable for these fast-moving times. Nuestra Señora has decreed that only one category of music is suitable. What's that? Easy listening. We've had enough. We're going back to the ship. Okay. You show me your brown card? Huh? What brown card is that? The official exit visa. The guy wasn't showing much enthusiasm selling his wares. Hi. You want to buy something? Uh, no, not really. I got cabbages. Buy a cabbage, senor. I don't think so. I didn't come all this way to buy vegetables. Listen, have you heard of Condor Trans Global? No. Buy a cabbage. I'll give you a discount on bulk purchases. I'm not in the cabbages. Have you ever seen anything like this before? Aye, Tetzcatlipoca. Put it away, senor. Tetzcatlipoca brings nothing but evil. The poor guy was so freaked, he didn't even mention his cabbages. See ya. It was an uninteresting little wooden hut with an armed goon outside it. Inside the hut was a chair and a small table. The man was puffing away at a crudely rolled cigar.
Hi there. Uh, what have you got for sale? Key? I said, what have you got... Oh, never mind. The old woman was preparing a food that consisted of ground maize and lots of spittle. Hi. Lovely bread. Que? Bread. Uh, pan? Si, pan. Uh, maybe I'll come back later when I'm hungry. The woman had an impressive display of gourds. Things are gourds, aren't they? See. <laughs> hey, why the footwear lady? Do you have to spit like that? See. Si. You think I want to swallow that crap? What I mean is, it can't be doing your business any good. I'm sure you'd sell a lot more gourds if you didn't. Nobody ever complained before. Okay, I can see I'm not getting through. The guy was selling fish. Do you have crabs? No, only fish. <laughs> nice fish. Thanks. If by some remote chance I ever need a fish, I'll be back. Do you recognize this statue? Si, senor. It is very, very bad luck. That is just get the poker. I know, but I don't believe in luck, good or bad. You may not now, but you will. The guy looked scared out of his wits. Go away! <laughs> A couple of musicians stood watching life go on around them. They looked pretty depressed. Hey, cheer up, guys. What's with the long faces? Our pipe player has been arrested and thrown in jail. Poor Miguel. He never broke the law in his life. Do you guys know anything about a total eclipse? What is it? It's like when the sun is hidden by the moon. It's crazy. My cousin Alfredo swears he saw it happen once. But that was after he stupidly consumed a cocktail of peyote and antibiotics. Take a look at the design on this label. I have seen that before. Where? There was a ship flying a flag just like that. When did you see this ship? Three months ago. It was here, at the docks. What do you make of this little worm? No good. It's dead. Sure it's dead. You think I'd carry it around in my pocket if it wasn't? Have you seen anything like... I, the hungry chief. Why are you carrying a thing around with you, senor? Don't you know who it is? Sure, it's Tezcatlipoca. But it's only a little carving. It brings death, senor. Death and destruction. Have you any idea what this is? No, senor. Me neither. Would either of you guys care for a biscuit? A dog biscuit, senor? Are you trying to insult us? No, really, they're good. We'll take your word for it. Why don't you try playing a tune to cheer yourselves up? No, we should be looking for real jobs. We could earn ten times as much down the mines. My cousin Ramirez was earning eight pesos an hour. Before he lost his legs in the accident. Tell me about the accident at the mine. There was an explosion at Teokulkan. Thirty miners were buried alive. They got some of them out, though. Two of them, including your cousin, and they left half of him behind. Why was Miguel put in jail? For playing folk music. What? It's true, senor. He insisted on playing traditional Cuaramonte music, even though it's illegal. What was the ship with the condor flag carrying? I don't know, senor. 
we weren't allowed near the docks. That's right. Usually we meet the ships when they tie up. We play to the tourists. Well, when the Condor ship came in, we were told to go away. I recognized the woman immediately. Last time I'd seen her was in a market in Syria. It was Pearl Henderson, the globe-trotting bargain hunter. A dusty track led around to the back of the building. George Stobart, well of all the... Mrs. Henderson. Boy, this is some coincidence, huh? When you've been married to a fruitcake like Duane as long as I have, you stop believing in coincidence. I'd met Pearl and Duane on the other side of the globe in Syria. He was an army veteran who suspected he was working for the CIA, but wasn't sure. She was less obviously deranged. <laughs> Look at this, Pearl. A tequila worm. Don't you bring that thing anywhere as near me, honey. I swear I'll scream like a hog on a hot plate. Take a look at this news cutting, Pearl. You'll have to read it to me, George. I left my specs in a gay bar in Santa Barbara. Well, it's about an eclipse of the sun, which is due to occur in a few weeks' time. You'd think the government would warn us about these kind of things. Uh, uh it's not dangerous or anything. Apparently, the best place to view the eclipse is right here in Cuaramonte. Oh, my. She didn't appear to be the slightest bit interested. What do you make of this statue, Pearl? Wee, that's a spitting image of Dwayne's brother Sheridan. A little less body hair, maybe, but it's him all right. What does this mean to you, Pearl? What cute little feathers. Why, if you had two of those, they'd sure make nice earrings. This isn't intended for frivolous personal adornment, Pearl. It's a dart tipped with a fast-acting, muscle-numbing poison. Pardon me, I stand corrected, honey. Sometimes I got the feeling that communication with Pearl was like sending signals out into space. Maybe if you waited long enough, you'd get an intelligent answer back, but it was a long shot. What do you make of this stone, Pearl? Oh, that's pretty. What's that thing supposed to be, a rabbit? I believe it's a coyote. Well, it sure is cute. I was surprised she didn't ask me where she could buy one. What brings you to Cuaramonte, Pearl? What takes me just about anywheres. The market. You drove 2,000 miles to go shopping? Shopping is my role in the economy of the great design, George. Is Dwayne here with you, Mrs. Henderson? Why, sure. I couldn't leave him home alone. Since Dwayne came back from the war, we couldn't bear to be apart. So, where is he now? We ain't speaking. <laughs> Why aren't you speaking to Dwayne? Because he's an old spoil sports sarapus. I want to visit one of those old pyramid places, but Dwayne says he has to stay in town. Right. And you don't want to go on your own. Well, there's no point in going to the pyramid if there's no one around to take my picture. Is Dwayne still working for the CIA? If he is, he doesn't know it. He's what they call a snoozer. Uh, don't you mean a sleeper? No, this is different. He used to think he worked for them, but the psychotherapy cured him of that. What he doesn't realize is that now he really does work for them. At least that's the way I understood it. Catch you later, bro. It was one of the windows of the jail. The cell was vacant. It was one of the cell windows. There was a forlorn looking guy asleep on the floor of the jail. It was Miguel, the pipe player. Hey, Miguel! He didn't hear me. It was Pearl's husband, Dwayne. Hey, Mr. Anderson! Good to see you again. Do I know you, son? George Stobart, remember? In Syria? I sold you a statue. I remember that. Pearl was mighty vexed when the paint came off. Look, I'm sorry. I'll give you back the $50. No, no. You suckered me fair and square. What do you think of these panties, Dwayne? Lord. Hot stuff, George. You buy those for your girl? No. A guy we know in Paris bought them for her. Oh. You're a three 
face on that. Why are you looking at me like that, George? Forget it. Do you know anything about a shipping company called Condor Transglobal? Sure I do. You have to get up pretty early to catch way with his pants down. What? You beat me to it? Condor Transglobal is all wound up. Seems like my investigations scared them off. Would you like to borrow my lucky piece of coal, Dwayne? What's so lucky about it? Well, we made it to Cuaramonte in one piece. When you've been here a few days, you won't look on that as luck. Would you like a biscuit, Dwayne? Oh, no. Those gourmet dog snacks bring me out in a rash. You've tried them? They were on special offer. Pearl bought a whole crate. When I asked her if she was thinking of keeping a dog, too, she just laughed. Did you drive all the way down here? Hell no. Pearl did the driving while I followed the maps. The way she handled the wheel, you'd think she'd been trucking half her life. Why did you bring a huge truck like that? George, I'm on a top secret classified mission for Uncle Sam. This truck is a rolling bomb. 400 pounds of nitrate fertilizer with a plastique initiator. They'll hear the bang in China. Gee, I'm really looking forward to this. I spoke to Pearl earlier. Yeah? Did she mention that we had a kind of falling out? Yes, she did. She'll get over it. Did you know that traditional music is illegal in Caramonte? Is that so? Seems reasonable to me. No, really. The leader of the band in the square has been in prison just because of the music he played. I don't know who you've been talking to, but that fella, Miguel, he's an agitator. What's the real reason the musician was imprisoned? Handed out subversive literature at the mines. That so-called general was waiting for Miguel when he got back into town. Marched him off to jail at gunpoint on a charge of inciting a riot. Does the name Karzak mean anything to you? Sounds like a comic book villain to me, son. He's the man behind Condor, and the rat who kidnapped Nico. You know, the first time I met you, I was deeply impressed with your naive simplicity. I said to Pearl, if we ever had kids, I would have wanted a boy like George. But I underestimated you, son. Are you still working for... You know who? You know I can't talk about my work, George. That's between me and Uncle Sam. It was Dwayne's truck, packed with high explosive, according to that amiable old paranoid. Reminded me of the time I was in Syria. Uh, but that's another story. Stealing trucks wasn't my style. He was a friendly looking guy. Hi, I'm George Stobart. What do you think of these panties? Awesome. You wear them? Uh, no. Someone sent them to my girlfriend. Thoughtful. Have you heard about the eclipse of the sun? Sure, I'm having a party to celebrate it. Drop by. Really? Sure. Plenty of food, plenty of wine, and everyone's invited. Except the general. Do you recognize the design on this label? Why, sure. That's the Condor Transglobal Shipping Company logo. Do they have an office in Cuaramonte? No, but they ship out from here. That's what I thought. Do you know what this statue represents? Should do. I used to carve things like that to sell to tourists. But it scared people around here, so I stopped. Can you tell me anything about this stone? That's obsidian. It's a volcanic rock which has cooled so fast that... Yeah, yeah. Look, I'm not interested in geology. You're not? I suppose you want to know about the carved picture on it. That's right. Then the guy you should talk to is the professor. He was here a while ago. What can you tell me about the mining company? The general closed down one of their mines after the explosion. Lots of folks lost their lives. I was lucky. I only lost my legs. 
Did you see the ship with the condor flag? Mm, no. But the dock is just the other side of the square. Might as well be the other side of the moon. Hey, Nico! I have done just as I have been instructed, Professor. With the mine closed down, there'll be no one around to observe your excavation. Ah, I have visitors. Just remember what I told you, General. There's really no need to make a martyr out of that man. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, senor. Welcome to Quarmonte. Thanks. My name's George Stobart from California. But what is this? An angel come down to Earth. Nicole Collard. Enchanté, mon général. Pardon me, senorita, but I couldn't help myself. Uh, look, we'd like to ask you a few questions. You've come to the right place, senor. Uh, tourist information. General Graciento, at your service. Do you know anything about the forthcoming eclipse, General? Such things do not interest me, senor. Take a look at this label. Si, senor. Condor Transglobal. Can you tell me where to find their offices? No, senor. I never heard of them, and neither did Ronaldo. What do you think of these panties, General? Oh, boy, fabuloso. They're yours if you'll tell me all you know about Karzak. Karzak? I never heard of him. Do I get the panties now? I told you all I know. You told me nothing. Have you ever seen anything like this before? That's a native carving, isn't it? Where did you get it? We picked it up in the market, as a souvenir. Would you like a biscuit? Are you trying to bribe me? Well, every man has his price. Mine is more than a dog cookie, Senor Stobart. We've had enough of Cuaramonte, and we want out. Am I stopping you? The guy at the docks tells me I need an exit visa. Ask Ronaldo. He'll make the arrangements. That's what he's here for. Who was the guy you were talking to when we arrived? Professor Oubier. A visitor, senor, like yourselves. Did you say Oubier? Si, senor. Professor Oubier. A French archaeologist. What's Oubier doing in Cuaramonte? Researching our rich and glorious past, senor. The professor is planning an expedition to some Mayan ruins. He came to see me to get an excavation permit. Are there any ruins around the city? Of course, senor. Cuaramonte has everything. I have a friend who wants to visit an historical site. Ronaldo will only be too pleased to conduct a guided tour. When he's dealt with today's paperwork, of course. Is it true there's a restriction on music in Cuaramonte? Yes, there is. An emergency measure introduced by Nuestra Señora. Folk music is a link with the past for some of these people. Take away their musical roots and what do they got left? Easy listening. You think easy listening could replace a musical heritage hundreds of years old? Why not? It happened in your country. I hear there was an accident at the mine a few months ago. That's correct. A lot of men killed, weren't there? A few. Thirty? <laughs> Barely one percent of the working population. This is the tourist office? It says police on the sign outside. It is both, senor. I am a man of many parts. I can see that, general. Are you sure you never heard of Condor? Oh, yes. The company is registered here, in Cuaramonte City. You are mistaken, senorita. The musicians out in the square say that a ship flying the condor flag was birthed here. They are simple peasants. 
They will go along with anything you say in the hopes of parting you from your money. Condor is run by Karzak, isn't it? Wrong again, senor. Karzak has nothing to do with anything called Condor. Whoever he is? Do you keep a record of companies registered in Quaramonte? Of course, senorita. Unfortunately, all the records were destroyed by a flash flood. I'll be back. It was the map which the general had been showing to Professor Oubier. A gloomy passage led to the rear of the building. He had the eyes of a cocker spaniel set in a face like a deflated souffle. I couldn't help wondering what had driven him to work for a man like the general. A filing cabinet stood in the corner. Hi. I'm George Stobart. Hello, senor. How can I help you? You know anything about this eclipse? No, senor. El General keeps me in the dark about most things. Do you recognize this statue? It's Catholico. The night wind. Take it away, senor. That stone is cursed. Would you like a gourmet dog snack biscuit? I would love one, senor. But I would have a problem with my teeth. Toothache? No, senor. If the general catches me eating on duty, he'll knock them out. I'm trying to get out of Cuaramonte. If I had a dollar for every time I heard that, I'd be able to buy back half my family. Never mind them. What about my visa? We don't take visa. I didn't ask if you take a visa. I want you to give me a visa. I can't help you, senor. I don't understand these things. Are there any ancient pyramids near Cuaramonte? Si, senor. But it's not very impressive. It's in ruins. That's perfect. Would you be willing to give a guided tour of the ruins? I can. The general would have a feat if I left all this paperwork. I'd like to visit your prisoner. Condemned prisoners aren't allowed visitors. Condemned? To death. He is to be executed. Knowing my luck, I will probably have to shoot him myself. Amnesty International is going to hear about this. I thought Miguel was arrested for playing the wrong kind of music. Si, senor, he was. And that carries the death penalty? No, no, no. You think we're crazy? While being questioned, he confessed to being an anti-government agent. So long. Why did you show him the stone? I thought maybe he might know something about it. Well, he does now, for sure. He knows we have it. That man we saw talking to the general was Ubié. Didn't you recognize him? I never met him, remember? The guy I called in Paris claimed to be Ubié, but he sounded nothing like the man in the police station. Maybe the professor really is innocent. Now, it's too much of a coincidence that he's here in Cuaramonte. You came on a little strong with the general. I was merely flattering his ego, George. Every man has his Achilles heel. Maybe, but that guy's weakness isn't in his foot. Did you notice that chart on the police station wall? Yes. It looked like a map to me, but I couldn't make out the details. Whatever it was, the general didn't want us to see it. It was that suspect archaeologist, Ubié. Professor Ubié? Yes. Who are you? My name is Stobart. George Stobart. Take a look at this, Professor. What have you got to say about that? Where did you get this? Never mind that. How do you explain these withdrawals? I left my financial affairs in the hands of my secretary. Including the withdrawal of funds in cash from your personal account? I trust Gwyneth implicitly. And why myself? Why the very place my girlfriend was taken? That's obvious, Stobart. We are both the victims of the same devious plot. Now what plot? I have no idea. Do you know anything about this eclipse, Professor? 
Of course. It's not the reason I'm here in Cuaramonte, but I'm looking forward to seeing it all the same. Do you see this label? Yes. It refers to a company named Condor. What of it? I traced that company here, to Cuaramonte. Do you know where I can find the offices of Condor Transglobal? The company no longer exists. They went bankrupt recently. I have proof that you are directly involved with Condor. I used them as shippers to transport artifacts to a gallery in Paris. Beyond that, I have no connection with the company, which, as I said, no longer exists. Can you identify this statue, Professor? Oh, yes. Tezcatlipoca, the Lord of Darkness. A Central American god, right? A supreme deity. Tezcatlipoca means, literally, smoking mirror. There, you see the mirror shield in his left hand? The Mayans believed he could look into the mirror and see into the hearts of men. He was the wind which came howling in the night in search of victims. And victims they gave him by the thousand. Human sacrifices? Men, women, children, animals, anything that bled. The steps of his temple ran red with the blood of sacrifices. The Mayans have a legend that says he'll return one day. I hope I'm not around to see it. Can you tell me anything about this stone? Where did you get that? This is the stone my girlfriend called you about. The stone that nearly cost Nico her life. I assure you, I don't know what you're talking about. Would you like a biscuit? No, thank you. You should, they're good. Mm. I can't do enough of these things. Have you ever employed a Central American butler or servant? I've never employed any kind of servant, monsieur. What are you doing in Caramonte, Professor? Seeking Mayan artifacts. Central American history has been my life's work. What do you know about my girlfriend's abduction? I don't know what you're talking about. She was invited to your mansion in Paris. Not by me, she wasn't. I haven't been home for nearly seven months. Tell me about your wife, Professor. Please, I... I don't want to talk about her. You shot her, didn't you? No. I loved Carol. She meant the world to me. Does the name Karzak mean anything to you? Yes, I know him. In fact, if it wasn't for Karzak, I wouldn't be here. What? He's financing my expedition. What's your interest in the Eclipse, Professor? Oh, it's purely a layman's curiosity. History is my subject, not astronomy. But I've been fascinated by the movements of the heavenly bodies since I was a child. I wouldn't miss a total eclipse for the world. Does the Eclipse have some special significance for you? For me? No. For the ancient Mayans, it marked the end of the Fifth Age. Perhaps we should be celebrating. Ah, no. The end of each age heralds destruction on a global scale. The Fifth is the final age, ending in the total destruction of the Earth. Hey, Nico! Hola, senora. Hi. We were wondering... I was talking to the lady, Chico. Hi, my name is Nicole Collard. Concha Garcia, how can I help you, sister? The corporation I represent is considering a major investment in Cuaramonte. Your advice, as the head of an obviously successful concern, is precisely what I'm after. My assistant, Mr. Stobart, has a few questions he'd like to ask you.
Would you be interested in these panties? They look about your size. Is that your best line, Chico? I'm serious. They were an unwanted gift. Put them away before you get overexcited. Have you heard about the forthcoming eclipse? I don't take much interest in things like that. One of the boys might know about it. You see this? It's my lucky piece of coal. What's so lucky about it? I'm not sure yet. Nice buns. Do you recognize the icon on this label? Condor Transglobal. Did the company operate here in Caramonte? Yes, they ran an old container ship, the Mayan Princess. Can you tell me anything about the statue? It is Tezcatlipoca, the god of death and pestilence. That fetish would be considered by many to be a bad omen. Does this stone mean anything to you? I think it is a spirit stone carved by a Mayan priest, no? I don't know which of their many gods it represents. Would you like a dog biscuit? Would you like a smack in the mouth, Chico? Do you know Professor Ubier? Yes. I understand he is about to embark on an archaeological expedition. He hired some equipment from me earlier today. I overheard him talking to the general. I think they're working together. What? If I'd known that, I wouldn't have hired out the equipment. Now, why would the general be interested in an archaeologist? Can you tell me about the accident at the mine? Accident? It was sabotage. Somebody wanted my mine closed down for good. Do you have any evidence that the mine was sabotaged? Not yet, but I'll get to the bottom of it. There'd been trouble at that mine for several months. The workforce was getting smaller every day. Someone had started a rumor among the men that the mine was cursed. Now the entire operation has been closed down. Where's the site of the mine? Several days upriver at a remote area known as Teokulkan. Have you heard of a man named Karzak? No, who is he? He's the reason we came to Cuaramonte. We think he's running a drug ring. Well, I hope you find him, but I've never heard the name before. Do you know who owned Condor Transglobal? I have no idea. It was Conchita, the owner of the mining company. It was a store cupboard. It was one of Conchita's posse of hunks. Hi, good afternoon and welcome to Consolidated Mining. If you are planning to stay in Cuaramante City, may I recommend the Consolidated Mining Experience, an interactive hands-on tour of one of our deepest mines, with talking tour guides available in three different languages. A tour of a mine? Well, this is a mining company. What else did you expect? Do you know where I could find Senor Karzak? No, Senor. Do you know anything about the eclipse that's due soon? Me? No, senor. How come you're not wearing any pants? I feel more alert without them. A kind of perky. And your boss doesn't mind? She suggested it. A disgustingly handsome man. I couldn't understand why the female owner had surrounded herself with men like this. The guy was working away like an automaton. Ever heard of a guy called Karzak? Can't you see I'm busy? If I don't finish this stock report, the boss will be mad as hell. Are you looking forward to the eclipse of the sun? Not especially. Are you? I don't know. I've never seen one. All I know about eclipses is that you shouldn't try to view them with a the naked eye. Please, go away and let me get on with my work. Did you know there's an eclipse of the sun in a few weeks' time? Yeah, Joe told me about it. He's having a party and we're all invited. Me and the boys are dressing up as evil monks. Yeah? Cool. Ever hear of a guy called Karzak? No, sir. Ever heard of a guy called Karzak? No. Do you know anything about the eclipse? Yes, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it. 
I heard it's going to be pretty spectacular. It's in a few weeks' time, isn't it? Nine days. Thanks. have time to get sidetracked by playing computer games. A safe was tucked under the desk. The safe was undoubtedly locked. I decided to leave the television switched on. The television was showing what appeared to be a low-budget soap. A tall man with long blonde hair was shouting at a woman who was naked apart from a towel. Do you have a map of Coromonte? A map? I'm sorry, senor, but I don't. What about the one on the wall? Ah, that is an archaeological survey map, senor. Not suitable for tourists. I'll be back. I had nothing else I wanted to ask him. I hear you drove all the way to Cuaramonte in a truck. That's right. You would not believe the state of some of those roads. Makes me damn right sad to think there's still some places you can't reach in an automobile. In this day and age, you'd think there'd be decent highways just about anywhere folk choose to go. Did you know that the truck was full of explosives? Whatever gave you that idea, as if I couldn't guess. Your husband. He was exaggerating, wasn't he? Sometimes I wonder how I'm going to cope with Dwayne's over-fertile imagination. Have you met the guy who calls himself the General? No, I haven't. Is he a real General? I guess so. He wears a lot of medals on his chest. The wrong side of his chest. At least for any army I'd ever seen. Catch you later, Pearl. Is Miguel the reason you're here? Pretty smart, George. I was supposed to make contact with him. By the time I found him, though, he was in jail. I've been trying to figure out a way to get him out since then. Sounds good to me. Count me in. Good man, George. All I need is a detonator. How come you brought a truckload of explosives but no detonator? Call me old-fashioned, but I say packing trunks is woman's work. I left the packing to Pearl, and I can't find a darn thing. Just hope she remembered to bring my denture polish. I'd sure hate to arrive back in the States with tar on my teeth. Do you think the general was involved with Condor? Hell no. And if he's a general, I'm a Buddhist. No, that fella's just a mouthpiece for the real power in Guaramonte. So the general is nothing but a puppet? He's like Pinocchio before he met the Blue Rinse Fairy. Strictly strings and wood. Who's pulling the strings? His mother. Better known as La Presidenta, the dictator. Did you find any evidence of Condor's drug smuggling operations? Drugs? Hell no. Condor was a cover for the illegal export of Mayan artifacts. 
So who was behind Condor Trans Global? It was registered in the name of Edan. Did you get the guy? I don't think he ever existed. Edan backwards spells Nady, Spanish for nobody. Why don't you want the general at your party? Because if he comes, he'll bring those damned music albums from the 70s. device in stock. Sure. They're kept in that cupboard. I don't suppose you have one spare. I can't simply give you a device like that. No, without a damn good reason. The general has a chart in his office, which he was discussing with Ubia. Perhaps that chart will tell us where they're heading. Maybe, but I can't get anywhere near it while the general and his sidekick are there. Tell me about the general. You know, the guy in charge around here. We don't want to talk about him, senor. How come? No one can hear you. Well, only that old goat. In Cuaramonte, we have a saying. Don't tell your old goat what you don't want your wife to know. Uh, what does that mean? I don't know. Could you distract the general while I took a look at that chart? You're kidding. Did you see the way he was leering at me? Yeah. You'd make a great snake charmer. Come on. Five minutes is all I need. Well, maybe. But it's your hairbrain scheme. You do the talking. friend has a favor she wants to ask you, General. For you, my dear. And I've changed my mind. Oh, no, no. She's embarrassed about asking you for an interview, General. An interview? With me? Fabulous! Well, I... I... I want to write a story about you. You hear that, Ronaldo? An exclusive glossy spread about your beloved general. Si, senor general. Look after things here. I'm going back to my apartment and I don't want to be disturbed. I'll get you for this, George Tobar. Don't worry. If you're gone for more than a couple of hours, I'll come and get you. A couple of hours? Would you take my friend to the ruins now the general's gone? I'd be honored, senor. Thanks. I'll go get him. Do you know where I could buy a detonator? Did Dwayne put you up to this by any chance? Oh, I get it. This is to detonate the truckload of explosives, right? Hey, come on, I was kidding. <laughs> 
Did you think I was serious? I know what you boys are like when you get together and make plans. Dwayne says he could solve all the world's problems if he had enough missiles. I've made the arrangements for your visit to the temple, Pearl. Oh, that's just great, George. Why don't you come too, honey? I'd love to, but right now I have to save the world. Listen, sweetie. I'm looking for an official guide to take me to the old pyramid. For a lovely lady, I would go to the ends of the earth. For you, I will go as far as the pyramid and back. But what about your husband? What he doesn't know won't hurt him. Let's go, Beanpole. As Pearl and Ronaldo set out for the ruined pyramid, I prepared to search the police station. The safe was undoubtedly locked. I had no need for junk mail, especially someone else's. A couple of special offer letters were strewn across the desk. It looked like a geological survey map showing the land to the southeast of Cuaramonte City. About 60 miles inland and upstream was an area marked Teocolcan. It was Miguel, the musician. It was a length of rope knotted in a hangman's noose. I'm George Stobart. You're Miguel the musician, aren't you? Ex-musician, senor. My career is finished. Ah, going to jail could be the boost your career needed. Senor, I would rather die than live with this shame. Have you heard of a guy called Karzak? Yes. The old man spoke of him. The foreigner? Professor Ubier? That's right. This man Karzak is Ubier's boss. Why is that noose hanging from the bars? Ronaldo strung it up for me to hang myself. Don't cry for me, Senor Stubbard. When I am dead, the goddess will take my soul to rest in paradise. station. It's a map of Cuaramonte. Does it tell us where Ubier is heading? Yeah, a place called Teocolcan. That's the site of the mine. I wonder why they're being so secretive about Ubier's plans. One thing's for sure. If the general's involved, they're up to no good. I'd like to talk to that musician we get. Take the detonator and get him out of that jail.
Here is the detonator, Dwayne. Keep your voice down, George. You want everyone to know. You'd best go and warn Miguel that the U.S. Cavalry's on the way. Okay. happening we're getting out of here who's we they've sent the delta force nope the impossible missions force don't make me sick much Wh better who then a retired greetings card salesman from ohio i'm doomed you're not the only one i should have known you'd be trouble the moment i saw you look i can explain everything get in that cell now. And what if I refuse? He'll shoot you. Okay, here I am, going quietly into the cell. Very wise, not the Americano scum. One of the reasons I hate guns so much is the way they make people so damned impolite. I hope you're enjoying your vacation, Senor Stobart. Ah, go polish your weapon, Ronaldo. This was part of your plan, right? Well, in a manner of speaking, no. I was all out of ideas. It was up to Nico now. So, here we are. You've changed. I thought I would slip into something more comfortable. The stench of cheap cologne rolled over me like tear gas. So, what do you want to know about me? Ask and I will answer. I will deny you nothing. I am a very giving person. How nice for your friends. Your eyes are glittering like stars. His damn cologne was making my eyes water. I was running out of sofa. As spirited as you are beautiful, I admire that. As long as he admired it from afar. It was a portrait of some thug in a uniform. I didn't want the picture. Cutting edge technology. In 1978, at any rate. On close inspection, I noticed that the swordfish was peppered with machine gun bullet holes. The general was a real sportsman, and no mistake. I didn't want to watch a lot of tawdry soap operas. I had to keep him talking. But what about? We had nothing in common. The door represented the escape route. A lava lamp, hip in a retro way. I had no doubt the general thought it was hip, full stop. I didn't want the lava lamp. A tiger skin lay on the floor. The tiger was beyond help. The tiger was beyond help. It was General Graciento in full-on, lounge-lizard mode. That tiger skin! You didn't kill it yourself, did you? Alas, no. I had to import a synthetic one from the United States. It is very comfortable to lie on... naked. 
Unfortunately, I'm allergic to man-made fibers. Is that a lava lamp? Sure, it's more impressive in the dark. I'll close the blinds. No, no, don't do that. Not on such a beautiful day. I, um, love your TV. Oh, yeah, cool, no? Who's the guy with the hat and the fat cigar? My mother. Uh, nothing, Mom. I was... Uh, 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 I'm in uniform. And when I'm in uniform, it's... Madame President, sorry. Madame President. Now, what is going on here? Nothing, Madame President. I was just showing my friend Nico some of the cool stuff I've got. Hi. Good afternoon, senorita. And just what are your intentions toward my son? Intentions? We were just talking. Oh, no. She has good bone structure now. Has she any brains? She's a reporter. Is she? And what sort of questions has she been asking? I'm a freelance photojournalist. I do lifestyle pictures. For what sort of magazines? It looks safest to play dumb with good bone structure. Um, Haya, uh, lifestyle of the super rich and vainglorious, Envy magazine. It was pretty obvious who pulled the strings around here. I hope George was making good use of the time I was buying him. And then it goes... Pa, 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 pa. And when you were in this band of yours, you used to play that song for two hours? Yeah, we were really famous at our college. Still, ours wasn't as good as the original version. I have never heard that song before, yet I have no doubt that this must be true. Hey! Hey, George! Dwayne Henderson! Boy, am I ever glad to see you. Get to the American Consul and tell him I've been imprisoned without charge. Get real, George. He was the previous occupant of that cell you're in. We're gonna have to use good old American know-how to get you out of there. Uh-oh. That and this truck full of explosives I've got here. Dwayne, Dwayne, listen to me. You'll kill all of us. You're such a naysayer, George. It'll go like clockwork. Uh, negative to negative. Uh, uh, positive to pos... Uh, you gotta get the bare copper wire here. Let me just... Uh, uh, go. Ah, all right, I'll just hook that up. All right, there we go. Okay, just a minute. I've got to get to a safe distance. Quick, Miguel, hit the mattress. You have strange customs up north. Late. Are we dead yet? Horseshit! What happened to the explosives? There ain't no explosives. My dumbass supplier must have given me organic fertilizer instead of chemical. All I got here is 400 pounds of lightly fried horse apples. That's a lovely image, Dwayne. Never mind, I'll think of something. I couldn't reach the noose. It was Miguel, the musician. Listen to me, Miguel. You give me that rope and I'll get us out of here. Is there somewhere you can hide from the general? Of course. My friends have a boat ready to take me up river. But how are you going to break out of here with just a short piece of rope? I'm not sure. But I'll think of something. If your plan doesn't work, will you let me hang myself in peace? I couldn't escape that way. Hey, Dwayne, I want you to tie this rope to your truck and then drive forward. 
I'd had no idea whether this was really going to work, but I'd seen it in a black and white western. Of course, Hopalong was using a horse, and Wayne had a four-ton truck, but hey, the principle's sound. Anything you say, George! Please forgive my mother. She can be a little difficult. Oh, my feet! Raoul! Propose, you idiot! Don't mind her. She just wants grandchildren. <laughs> Don't think I can't hear you, Raoul. I want the worthy successor, and you're not it! Propose now, or I'll do it for you! Look, Nico, we haven't known each other very long, but... What the hell was that? I didn't know what was going on, but Georges had to be involved in it somewhere. I ain't gonna say a thing, cause that sweet sound of falling masonry says it all. Quick, senor. The river. Huh? Wait! What about Nico? George, what have you done? You only had to sneak a look at the job, and it's turned into World War III! No time to explain. Come on! Don't move, terrorist scum! You talking to me, Junior? Yes, I'm talking to you, fat man. And my name's not Junior. A word to the wise, Junior. You carry on waving that pea shooter in my face, and the next person who sees it is gonna be your proctologist. Savvy? General, I am happy to report that I have apprehended the terrorists. Idiot, not them! The other American and the French woman! They're the ones! When I recovered consciousness, I was alone, washed up on the riverbank. My head was aching fiercely, and my mouth tasted like a swamp. But I followed the sound and discovered a treehouse in a nearby clearing. Interwoven vines made up what looked like a drive belt. That vine rope could be useful. I placed the bank statement over the damp leaves. It was heavy. I guessed that was intentional. The leverage from the cross allowed me to turn one of the stones but the other one remains stationary. The vine provided a drive belt to connect the two stones. I always wanted a treehouse like that when I was a kid.
cone was ideal as a makeshift container. As I held the fetish to the iron rim of the wheel, a shower of sparks cascaded onto the leaves. Quick man, put out that pyre. I found a sick woman up here. Sorry, Father, but I needed to attract your attention. My name is Stobart, George Stobart. I'm Father Hubert. I don't suppose you speak French. Huh? Why do you want to know that? I found a young woman with a fever in the river this morning. The poor girl is close to death. And there's nothing I can do for her but pray. I don't understand her. But I think she's speaking French. Hang on. That must be Nico. It was Father Hubert. That's my girlfriend you've got in your treehouse. What's the matter with her? She's been bitten by a venomous liver snake. But can't you do something for her? There's a cure, isn't there? I ran out of penicillin and morphine years ago. But the local people speak of a root which they believe will counteract poison. Where can I find this root? I don't know. But maybe the shaman in the village can tell us. What are you doing out here in the jungle? God's work. Not quite the destination I had in mind when I set out, but I don't know what they say. Mysterious ways and all. You didn't plan to end up here? No. I was on my way to the miners camp in the north. I was stuck here when my boat capsized on the river. That's exactly what happened to me. How long have you been here? Eleven years. Will you show me the way to the village? Me? Oh, but I can't. Can't? Nico's life depends on it. You're right. Of course, I should, despite my own guilt and shame. But I can't go as a representative of God with a priest collar. A priest collar? You mean you put your personal attire higher than the life of a sick woman? I will not go to that village looking anything but my best. Give me your collar. I'm sure I can find a way to press it. In the meantime, I must contemplate my sermon. There was obviously more than a creased collar bothering the priest. It was Father Hubert's collar. He wanted me to press it for him. So there I was, hundreds of miles from civilization, doing the housework for a priest. It's a strange world. The press worked surprisingly well on the collar. Here's your collar, Father. Thank you, George. You'd probably think it a little odd of me to make such a fuss. Oh, no. If I'd been living in the jungle for 11 years, I'd be completely screwy, too. Screwy? Yes, perhaps I am. Ever since my last visit to that village. Do you want to tell me what happened at the village? I forgot my vows. I let myself be overwhelmed by the beauty of this unspoiled paradise. And in a moment of weakness, animal passion reared its rampant head. You know, you should be writing romantic novels. Did you experience some kind of a 
physical liaison at the village? Yes, I'm ashamed to admit it, but I found myself doing the monkey dance. I've never heard it called that before. And I didn't want to pry any deeper into Hubert's murky past. Now you've got your collar back, will you take me to the village? I still don't finish my sermon. Look, Father, I still don't know why you're so reluctant to visit that village. And it's none of my business. Whatever the reason, it can't be more important than saving Nico's life. You're right. I must be crazy. You must make haste if we're to reach the village before nightfall. By the time we reached the village, it was sunset. Hello, boys. Glad to see you're still wearing the underpants, what? <laughs> They're the best Christmas present we ever had, Father. Mine are too tight. Well, we all have our cross to bear. Uh, this is George. He has a request to make. I'm afraid I can't stay. Good luck, George. That's a relief. I never feel comfortable with him about. Me neither. These damn pants keep riding right up my butt. So, what do you want? My girlfriend has been bitten by a snake. So? Everyone in my family has been bitten by snakes. I was bitten by a dormouse once. She's real sick. I hoped your wise man might have medicine. Wise man? You must have the wrong village. Are you going to stand by and let my girlfriend die? Of course not. What do you think we are, savages? We'll start the preparations for a cremation feast. Father Hubert said there was a wise man in the village who could help me. Ooh, he must mean the old man, the shaman. I'd like to see the shaman, please. You can't just go walking in there and demand to speak to the shaman. Why not? You have to observe the protocol. The shaman demands tribute. Tribute? You mean, like a gift? That's right. The eternal question. What do you give a man who has everything? Would your wise man have any use for lipstick? Not in that color. Haven't you anything in black? Of course I don't. Look, I know it's not much, but I want your shaman to have this. Do you expect him to eat that? He's an old man, you know. He might choke. This stone is what brought me here. That's a spirit stone. I wouldn't touch it if I was you. You're right. It could be cursed. Give me a clue. What kind of things does your shaman like? Does he have a hobby, a favorite sport? You insult us. The shaman lives on a higher plane. Oh, right. Maybe a book would be more suitable. Or a jigsaw puzzle? Don't you just hate choosing presents for people you don't know? Here, he'll like these biscuits. If you say so. He liked the biscuits, especially the black ones. He wants to know if you've any more. The guards looked as fierce as anyone can, wearing only their underpants. The guards looked as fierce as anyone can, wearing only their underpants. There wasn't much point in sending the empty box back to the shaman. I tucked the bright red panties in the empty box. Here. I found some more of those biscuits for the shaman. I'll give them to him. The shaman was pretty mad about those panties. Well, I didn't mean to offend him. You didn't. He was disappointed that they didn't fit. I didn't think that that was such a good idea.
I put the lipstick in the box. Here, I found some more of those biscuits for the shaman. I'll give them to him. The shaman kept your gift of wax. He was pleased with it. Can I go see him now? He wasn't that pleased. I dropped the tequila worm into the empty box. Here, I found some more of those biscuits for the shaman. I'll give them to him. He didn't want the little worm. He's a vegetarian. I put the statue in the empty box. Stop. This is a private village. You can't go in there. Here, I found some more of those biscuits for the shaman. I'll give them to him. The shaman said to give you back this statue. He didn't want it? He's already got one. I dropped the poison dart into the box with just a little itch of misgiving. Here, I found some more of those biscuits for the shaman. I'll give them to him. It didn't work. What? Your feeble attempt to assassinate the shaman by concealing a dart within this box. I put my lucky piece of coal in the empty box. Here, I found some more of those biscuits for the shaman. I'll give them to him. The shaman didn't want the black rock. I put the Mayan stone in the empty box. Here, I found some more of those biscuits for the shaman. I'll give them to him. The shaman wants to talk to you. I hoped he would. Well, it's been nice to talk to you guys. The woman was grinding a sticky mess of corn in a bowl. That woman certainly wasn't the reason I'd come to the village. The man was busily weaving a cloth. That man wasn't the one I'd come looking for. It was the focal point of the village, the communal cooking fire. The fire was too hot to approach, even if I'd wanted to.
The old guy was obviously the shaman of these people. Hi, my name's George Stobar. Please, sit down. Welcome, George. Thanks. It has long been foretold that a white man would bring the coyote stone to this village. Why is Father Hubert so reluctant to visit the village? I don't know. He used to come here a lot, but then he just stopped. You'd think he'd want to spend some time with his kids. Did you say Father Hubert has kids? Three girls and five boys, by my reckoning, all conceived in the same week at the Feast of the Monkey Dance. My girlfriend's been bitten by a snake. And you want me to heal her? That's the idea. Can you do it? I'm not sure. My gums aren't what they used to be. Listen, my girlfriend's in a coma. Please, old man, give me the root. What root? Father Hubert told me of a root which could cure the bite of the river snake. Tough. There's nothing sacred with these people. That was a secret known only to members of my tribe. If that root is my chance of saving Nico's life, then I want it. Fast. There's time yet, George Stobart. Time to learn why you were called here. Fine. If I listen to your story, then will you give me the root? The eel travels far, but still returns to the place of his spawning. And look, I'm running a tight schedule, so can you skip the riddles? Many years ago, when the world was young, the great god and king Quetzalcoatl was defeated by trickery and deceit. His enemy Tezcatlipoca took his place as leader and demanded terrible human sacrifices. A group of loyal priests found a way to trap Tezcatlipoca. But his powers were so great, they knew he would not remain trapped forever. His time of incarceration would end with the eclipse which marked the close of the fifth age. So the priests fashioned three obsidian stones which contained the power to seal the mirror for all time. But before the stones could be put in place, they were seized by the invading Spanish. But how did they trap Tez, the evil god? They built a pyramid which they told Tezcatlipoca was dedicated to him. At its center, they fashioned a huge mirror of perfectly smooth obsidian. Luring him into the pyramid with praise and flattery, they used sorcery to ensnare him in the mirror. Suppose I was to believe there was anything in your story, other than the rambling delusions of a seriously wacky old man. Suppose I was to swallow it, hook, line, and kitchen sink. What then? Then you would see that the fate of the human race rests upon your shoulders. Do I get anything to help me combat Tezcatlipoca? Like what? Well, a magical weapon? Get real, George. What happened to the stones? They were taken by the Spanish to the coastal town that is now called Guaramonte City. Only one stone reached Spain. The other two fell into the hands of buccaneers. The Jaguar stone was captured by an English captain, El Draco. The Eagle stone was taken by a pirate called Ketch. The third stone, the Coyote stone, reached Spain safely. That is the stone in your possession. Tell me more about the Eagle Stone. The stone was loaded onto a galleon with many valuable artifacts plundered by the Spanish. But shortly after leaving harbor, a terrible squall blew up and damaged the ship. The ship was intercepted by a bloodthirsty pirate, Captain Ketch. Ketch made short work of overpowering the crew, stealing the treasure, and sinking the Spanish ship. Where's the Eagle Stone now? Nobody knows for sure. Ketch retired from piracy and bought an island in the Caribbean. There's an eclipse of the sun due very soon, isn't there? Correct. 
The eclipse which marks the ending of the fifth age will come before the next full moon. Less than two weeks. I didn't really believe that Fez Katnipoka would return, but I figured Karzak's plans were in some way connected. Tell me more about the Jaguar Stone. Many centuries ago, the port of Guaramonte was entered by a ship flying Spanish colors. The captain, the man known as El Draco, sent soldiers ashore. Only when the soldiers arrested the mayor did the people realize that they were English privateers. The mayor was held hostage while the soldiers looted and plundered the city. Amongst the treasures they stole was the Jaguar Stone. Where is the Jaguar Stone now? I suppose El Draco took it back to his homeland, across the Great Sea. To England? What do I do when I find the stones? Bring them here to me and I shall prepare you. The stones must be taken to the heart of the pyramid. Only there can they be used to seal the gate by which Tezcatlipoca will return to this world. Can you show me the way to the pyramid of Tezcatlipoca? Not until you possess all three stones. Now do I get the root? Here, yeah. take it. Make haste if you wish to save the girl's life. The hummingbird seems to me of death to come. Now you're talking in riddles again. Listen, is it okay if I crash here? I've got no chance of finding my way through the jungle in the dark. You're welcome, but you probably won't get much sleep. Tonight's the night of the monkey dance. I left the village at dawn and stumbled back through the jungle in a post-party daze. It was just like sneaking back to my parents' house when I was younger. Except Oakland didn't have monkeys or parrots. Drink this. Oh, George, it's horrible. Just swallow it down. Okay, try and rest now, darling. You'll need all your strength when we go after the other two stones. Other stones? What other stones? What have you gotten me into now, George Tobot? The patient is sounding more like her old self already. Nico recovered quickly from her fever. To save time, we decided to split up and look for each stone independently. I traced the pirate catch to a remote island in the Caribbean. With the fortune he'd amassed from piracy, he'd retired to a place that was later called Ketch's Landing. <laughs> 